Hi guys, this is Barry from Cobb vs Glass, and today what we're going to be doing is having a look at the Chrome Remote Desktop application. To do this, you're going to want to go to the Chrome Web Store and search for Remote Desktop. Once you've found the application, it will look something like this, and to add it, we're just going to click on the free button in the top right hand corner. It's then going to ask us to confirm we want to add this application to Google Chrome. Once this is all done, we can click Launch Application to start the setup process. The first thing it's going to ask us to do is authorise the computer for remote connection, so we'll click Continue. It's important to remember that to use this, you need to be using the same Google account on both the computer and the phone. Once we've checked that, we can click Accept. Now that authorization has been granted, we can click Setup and we can start the setup for the connection to the computer. We're first of all though going to click Enable Remote Connections. As you can see it's going to start downloading a package in the bottom left hand corner of Chrome which we need to install to continue. As you can see if I click OK it just asks me to install the package. This package that it downloads is just a very simple installer which is very much the same as any other application you may install on your Mac or PC. We're just going to walk through the installation by clicking continue until the end and then we're ready to continue. You will need to be an administrator on the computer so make sure you have that password ready to install when prompted. Once done, we can close both of these windows and return to Chrome. We'll click OK to discard this message, and click OK to proceed. It will then ask us to generate a PIN number. This PIN number can be anything you want, and will be needed to access the computer remotely, so make sure you remember it. It then opens the System Preferences panel, which it then asks us to enter the PIN number. We have to unlock it by entering the System Admin password, and entering the PIN that we generated earlier. We then click Enable. Once that's done, this computer is now set up to accept remote connections from the app. You'll notice that it's put a little application in the System Preferences drawer. This is what we installed earlier. It prompts us to check that the computer's System Preferences are set so that the computer doesn't go to sleep. For energy saving purposes, I like to really only do this when it's connected to the power adapter. You can see that on the battery, it's set to computer sleep after about 10 minutes. But if I switch on over to the power adapter side, Computer sleep is set to never, and the tick box for put hard drives to sleep when possible is unticked. That's pretty much it for the computer side of the setup, let's now switch to the phone and continue the setup and start using the remote desktop application. On your phone or tablet, just go to the app store and search for remote desktop. If you search correctly, it should be the second result, but just to check, make sure it comes from Google Inc. We can click install of course because it's a free application and accept the terms and conditions and just install the application. Once done we can open the app. Now if everything's gone smoothly and you're using the correct Google account you should see your Mac or PC come up straight away. If we click on it it's going to ask us for the pin number that we generated earlier. Once we've entered the pin number we can press connect and hopefully you should see your desktop come up. As you can see mine's locked with a password as it was on the screensaver but I can move the mouse around and I can click on the keyboard icon in the top bar which will bring up the keyboard for me to enter my password. Unfortunately, automatically clicking in a field that should require text won't automatically bring up the keyboard. As you can see, moving around the mouse is very simple with a swipe of the finger and zooming in and out can be done with a pinch. I recommend turning the screen round into landscape as of course your monitor is going to be in landscape. As you can see, moving the mouse around is really smooth but this is probably down to me using the same Wi-Fi network. Moving the mouse in the centre of the screen will do so until you reach the border where it will actually start to move up to the border itself. The main controls you will find are in the top right hand corner under a drop down box which contain the keyboard icon, the closed menu icon and the traditional three dot menu options. In here you've got control alt delete predominantly applied to PCs, we have disconnect and we have help. This application is great and it works fine but there are some shortcomings. For example on the Mac it doesn't include the command function which is the CMD key on a Mac keyboard so it will limit some things you can do as it mostly only really does keyboard and mouse entry. All in all this application is really great, it does work very well and I've tested it over 4G and it's even better. This is Barry from Copper vs Glass checking out Google Chrome Remote Desktop and I'll catch you guys in the next video.